Okay, for this portion, I'm just going to briefly go over some of the areas that we polish um, on the bearing surfaces of the, the fire control group. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I like to do is take the disconnector. Frequently, the disconnector, I don't know how well you can see this. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on it a little bit. Um, a lot of times, whoa. This surface right here will be real sharp. And it's a good idea just to, nothing too crazy. Well, I'm out of focus again. Uh, just take a stone and just, just break that edge. There's no need for that to be razor sharp. Just a light breaking of that edge with a stone is, is good. Um, Then a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take this surface and we'll polish it. This is a piece of 500 grit sandpaper. We'll start with like 500 and then you can go up to 800 or 1000. But you can see how that starts to shine up. This particular part, <clears throat> it's kind of your typical MIM part. Um, this one has a little bit of a low spot right in the center. Actually, it's not that big a deal, but it just looks weird that you have a low spot when you start polishing some of these surfaces. So that's one that we'll work on a little bit more. I'll probably just take some uh, like thousand grit, go around the top of the, the disconnector so it slides nice and freely through the frame. Um, We'll take both sides of the sear, you know, like that. And the other side, obviously I'm not done, but I, I mean, you kind of get the picture. And then we'll take both sides of the hammer, same thing, smooth those out. And then some of these surfaces here and here on the sear spring. And then we'll do light polish. We don't really want to remove any material, but a little bit of a light polish on the hammer and the sear pin both. Um, but uh, I won't show the video on everything, but that's just kind of a brief overview of a little bit of the polishing of some of the areas that we do. Okay, here's my little polisher. I'm just going to hit a couple of spots on the sear spring quick with this. See how easily that some of that shines up. You don't want to get crazy, a lot of pressure, just a little oops, I lost my camera. Here we go. You know, just lightly polish up those bearing surfaces. One other thing I like to do is uh, I like to use a Kratex wheel to further polish the sear spring a little bit. Um, I guess Kratex, the best way to describe it is it's a material, it's like a rubber, almost kind of a pencil eraser consistency with, a, uh, with an abrasive impregnated within the, uh, the rubber. So... I like to usually just support it with the vise a little bit. And it really puts a nice shine on the material. I guess. 
We'll do the same thing to this portion of the sear spring as well. That's about it for that. Here's a, uh, this is the, the sear in my little vise. Um, one more thing that I like to do, and I like to take just a little bit of uh, polishing compound on one of these little tiny uh, sticks, like a little Q-tip without very much cotton on them. I like to go over that surface and just, just finally give it a f final polish. Again, it's the most critical surface and we want that to be as perfect as what we can get. It just a little bit more okay we about have all the polishing wrapped up we have a just a light polish on each side of the sear same with the hammer I didn't get real crazy with it just enough to polish up the high spots so any friction on the frame is going to be smooth also the end of the hammer strut where it meets the spring cap I like to put a little polish on there as well um, our disconnector, as we talked about before. Our hammer pin and our sear pin. Polished both of those so they ride smoothly in the, the bore of the sear and the hammer. Again, we talked about the sear spring for the, um, the sear portion and the disconnector slash trigger pull portion. And then we have our trigger itself. We polish the sides of the trigger bow and the rear, especially where it mates up with the, with the disconnector. So that's about it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put this back together and uh, take a couple measurements and see where we're at. Okay, we're back with the frame all assembled. We left the grip safety and the the thumb safety off for right now. Um, if you're wondering what this weird thing is sitting on top of the frame, it's just a little fixture so that when the hammer drops, it doesn't damage the frame. That way you don't have to have the slide on to test the trigger. Um, but our trigger right now is breaking at about three... Three and a half pounds, which is a huge improvement over the five and a half pounds with lots of creep. Now it's a nice, crisp, smooth three and a half pound trigger. It's actually just a little bit light. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab that sear spring and and uh, just tune that a little bit to get to about four pounds, and then we'll be all wrapped up. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions or comments you know, go ahead and drop me a line. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know, let me know that too. Thanks. Here's one more uh, short segment here. Um, here it is all back together. We've got a, almost a perfect crisp three and three quarter pound trigger pull. Um, it's nice and crisp with no no creep. It's about perfect. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video.